Yeah, so we just kind of wanted to finish the, the week with, you know, uh, a bit of a project meeting, a sort of general Q&A. Uh, yeah, you know, we used to we do these every year. So how's everybody doing? You know, have they have you all enjoyed yourself for the last five days? Good. No, we didn't. No, terrible. Well, I just, I mean, you know, I, I think it's been great. We've, you know, it's been busy. I want to, I want to thank the, you know, the video guys, all of our volunteers, Doug. I mean, it's been a huge amount of effort from everybody, and I think it's been an absolute success. So, if you ever could just, you know, give a round of applause to all the volunteers and everybody who made this happen. So yeah, this is like a bit casual. I you know want to just take any questions and anything for the board, for the project, for the audience here. What's on everybody's mind? Nice. Oh, oh. we have volunteer. Okay, open the festival. Um, my first question, perhaps it's already known by everybody, but either it came late. I don't know where and when will be the next open source conference? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have, oh, okay, I'll go up here. We have no idea. Um, we're thinking, in previous years we moved it around every single year. Um, it was an awful lot of effort finding local teams. It was an awful lot of effort on local teams. Um, and the, the thing we've been thinking about is have, picking one, maybe two locations where we have a very strong community, maybe support from SUSE, you know, so this isn't confirmed or guaranteed, but I really like the idea maybe of actually coming back here next year, same thing, same place, same teams, and growing it here, or possibly in Prague. Um, what does everybody think? Would you like to come back here next year? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so the one thing with having um, the same people doing the same job uh, year in, year out, is that quite often the, what we found in the past was burnout. <coughs> so just because these people did it before doesn't mean we can rely on them to do it again. Uh, they can certainly provide advice, guidance, etc. And we've got people from 2011 and before that have also done the conference in Nuremberg, but we still need people's help. Uh, so don't just take it as a given that it's going to happen and you don't have to worry about it. Please reach out to Doug uh, and others to see how you can help uh, to lessen the load on those that have done it in the past. Basically, in general, if you volunteer here, you reduce the amount of work for everybody. So you can volunteer just to work for two hours and spend the rest of the time basically watching the talks or helping on the talks. So it's not hard work in most cases. And ah, so it's hard work and not hard work. And anybody can do it and volunteer in any direction, either helping on the booth or helping with the audio video recording. It's not taking that much time and if there are more people than we need, it's always better than having to do with few and to overstress them. So please, volunteer for the next year. Any other questions? Yeah, just a precision. So normally we should be a sprint event. This time it will be a summer event because we start on 22. Uh, will we come back again? Perhaps an idea. I know how difficult it is to plan it correctly. Yeah, I think that's going to be one of the uh, things to come up in the discussions for the next event is do we move it back to May, do we keep it in June or whatever. Um, quite often some of these things are dictated by venue availability and uh, other events that are going on at the same time so people are going to be going to those other events or whatever else. So yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can do and, and hopefully a decision can be made um, soon. Just a, a follow up question to the board and I guess to the audience. Um, what did you think about this year having not only the OpenSUSE conference, but 
other related summit or whatever meetup, etc. Uh, so maybe first a quick pull uh, in the audience. Would you like to have that in the future? So not only open to the conference, but other events done at the same time. So we can mix. So, and also to the board, maybe you want to tell a bit more. So, from my perspective, I thought having things like Saltstack Summit, uh, Colab event, um, etc., was brilliant. Uh, especially Saltstack, who were a new participant, if you will. Colab came last year as well. Um, but Saltstack have their own community. Um, which introduced them to the OpenSUSE community and vice versa. We could both learn a lot from each, each other. Um, it's a relevant technology. Um, it's within the distro. I think picking who we collaborate with is just as important as ensuring that we have somebody else. Um, so if people have got ideas of other projects that we could potentially benefit from and they could benefit from us, suggesting those uh, would be really useful. Yeah, and it was really cool seeing Tom Hatch, the CTO of Saltstack, running Tumbleweed on his laptop. Um, but yeah, the, the Invis server guys have all gone home, but uh, I mean, they, they gave me some feedback already that they were really quite happy with you know, being here, I mean, they've, they've been working on OpenSUSE doing their small business spin for years, and this was the first time where they were able to actually come to a conference, meet us, see what we're doing, ask questions that have been bugging them for some time. And actually, you get all of us in the room, it's really easy to get these things fixed. And so I'm, yeah, really excited to kind of do that more often with more communities, both those that have stuff to do with OpenSUSE already and might want to in the future. Anybody else have anything to say on the topic or any other questions? Out of interest, how many people liked Zbow's venue? Okay, that's a good 90%, so we'll see if if we have it in Nuremberg again, maybe we can try and get Zabba again. Um, but what about the, the length? I mean, normally open to the conferences have been like three days long. This one was five. My personal feeling is it could do with being a day or two shorter. Yes. Yep. <laughs> okay, that's definitely going to happen then. I, I was about to ask about that. Um, but yeah, another kind of straw poll as we're doing this. Um, what about weekdays or over a weekend? So if you're interested in having it sort of three days during the week, or would you prefer to have it as a weekend conference? A mixture, so you'd... So maybe if we could do it by simple, quick vote. So who is only for a weekend? Raise your hands. Only? only weekend plus one day. So Friday plus weekend, Monday plus weekend. Okay, we have something like seven, eight people. So only work days. So we have, again, three or four people. It's a pretty good split. It's pretty good split. Yeah, so we all have to fight about it. <laughs> uh, that could be a nice discussion on the mailing list. Well, yeah, okay. Don't care, yeah. Okay, who doesn't care? They'll come whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you win. <laughs> I don't have any more questions for you. Good. Well, uh, oh, that was loud. Uh, actually, there was a question at the end of my of my presentation about what can we do in the marketing area, whatever, for give more visibility to those projects. So maybe it's now that we are here, is you can yeah, ask it again. I don't know. I just did that presentation because I felt that somebody has to to raise awareness, but actually maybe it's something we should discuss as a, as a project that why we are producing as much great stuff that nobody knows about. I thought I can jump in and 
also add to that. Um, I think one of the questions is why does a normal desktop user, private user, a lot of them prefer Ubuntu or Send? And I see one of the main reasons is if you have Ubuntu, I think still you can play DVDs, video. Suzy still has the licensing issue, and therefore it's difficult to pull people away from the current Windows scene where you're, you have your OEM Windows on there. Windows do also doesn't play DVDs anymore, but from your OEM, provided there's a DVD player in there. And that, I suspect that might be one of the key issues why people prefer to use another Linux as open Suzy. Suzy, if you look at the private. Okay, so uh, I have an uh, easy answer for that. Uh, this is all because uh, US laws, so you need to fix the US legal system, and then everything will be nice. Uh, regarding the marketing, uh, I think we are not actually doing that bad job, because uh, when I was on DEF CON for Red Hat Conference, those guys actually complained that we are too loud, and. Uh, <laughs> We are promoting our technologies much better than they do. And how do we do it? That they want to teach, uh, they want to learn from us. So, yeah, uh, sometimes we are quite loud. We can be always louder. That's, that always helps. But uh, ev every one of us has to do it. Uh, we cannot have just one marketing guy shooting everywhere. We, we need to amplify this message everywhere we go. I read the marketing. I think that uh, we are already doing quite right, but that we could be louder about the fact that we're not just a Linux distribution, but that we have OBS, that we have OpenQA, that we have OpenFate, events.opensuse.org, to show them that we are a project, uh, and more than a project, because like somebody said this morning, a project has an end. We don't have an end. We are a, we're a community, and the distro and the whole thing is part of the community. We do it all together. So we could be louder about that. So uh, I think with the multitude of different projects that we have, I think OBS has done a pretty good job of concentrating on, right, let's push OBS, ensure that People understand it's an open uh, build service. It's not an open SUSE build service. It's multi-platform, et cetera, et cetera. And they focus very heavily on their product, if you will. We could do the same with Jangout. Um, we could do the same with all the other projects. OpenQA's done pretty well recently. Um, and just going out to the events, submitting talks about that one project um, and highlighting the fact that, look, this comes from the greater OpenSUSE family of projects. It's not a SUSE thing. It's, it's not tied to one distribution. Um, so I think we need to focus on, on those pieces that we want to market, uh, if you will, and doing a sprint-like effort around it um, and ensuring that the collateral around those projects is maintained. You know, if we do flyers or whatever else, keep it up to date. Uh, because, you know, a wiki's great, but, you know, if you want something to be kept secret, put it in the wiki. <laughs> um, it, it, it's just one of those things. It's not the right tool necessarily to do the marketing. But if you say we, and you're talking about work, we means everybody, which means in the end nobody. And that's the point where we are at now, that nobody is really doing any effort that is in some way coordinated with in our community. True. Um, but if we take OBS as an example, or OpenQA, the people that were doing the pushing were the guys that are working on that project, and then when other people are going to other events, etc., 
they're pulling from what you guys did with OBS, what Richard, et cetera, have done with OpenQA. So there's an element of, uh, you know, shepherd and sheep. So you have to be the shepherd. The people within that project, whether it's Django, it's OBS, OpenQA, uh, OSM, whatever, need to try and start. It's all about getting the critical mass of the community around you to help push you along. It, yes. It's not a one-shot scenario, unfortunately. Yes, but as one of the or one of the maintainers and marketeers of most of the projects you have told about like Olsen and OBS that all relies on on pretty much on, on the developer's shoulders. We don't get any support from OpenSUSE. None. What kind of support do you expect? St stickers. I expect materials in general. I expect templates of stuff. I ex expect instructions. I expect ready-made things. Well, in terms of templates, you've had them now for two years. In terms of stickers, the guy to speak to sitting right behind you. Um, no, I don't mean open source stickers. I mean like helping the project that are go that go out there and market okay. themselves to but, okay, show their so association I to. I understand that point, but this is. I think we fall into a trap, and uh, there's something that Ankor said in his talk actually that I, I have a problem with. Is this idea of I'm a developer, therefore marketing isn't my thing, or I don't, you know, I want to, and, and like that's, Penn touched on that too. I see marketing as a key part of actually what we're doing as developers, as contributors to the project. Because if we, if we just do the code, if we just do the, co the core contributions and forget about spreading that message, doing that work as well, then it all just ends up on our shoulders and we end up buckling under the, uh, the, you know, the weight of maintaining our own contributions. You, there has to be sort of, I guess, an 80-20 split at least of actual, you know, you have to be the, the contributor and the marketeer. You have to be able to do both. And I think, therefore, the expectation that somebody else should do it for you isn't really there, and just as the same way that you wouldn't expect somebody else to write your code for you. But nobody expects this. Everybody expects collaboration expect, and help, like, and not that somebody is doing it for me. But then, I where do you want help? Then, where do you expect those stickers to come from? I don't know. From somebody that helps me, because I have to do my own stickers. So, have uh, you asked? <laughs> so, what one Ooh. of the one of the. Um, areas that you can get, try, or at least try and get additional input from the community, etc. on, is if, as one of the guys working in whichever project, um, you know where the gaps are, okay? So if on uh, 101, as an example, we can have a, a Marketing is, is one of the one ones and it's relatively low-hanging fruit to get people to start contributing to the marketing aspects. So having a list of what you need for that will help people actually contribute and take some of that load off of you. I have actually a question that exactly ties into that. I think um, I contribute occasionally because I'm quite under load, but... I, for instance, uh, with OBS, I've been doing quite a lot lately, and I always had the problem to know who are actually the guys who are really in charge. Like, you say, of course, you know somebody like Adrian, and you're sticking around in IRC, but you don't know how to approach for certain areas, like regarding marketing. Who would I approach if I would need something like that? Okay, Douglas would be an option, but is it that? Is that somewhere written down? Is there somewhere in Wiki, hey, this is the guy who is doing it? The Open SUSE board is absolutely clear. That's documented, it's clear who is a member of it. But uh, for certain sub areas, like in the kernel, you have maintainers, right? You, you know exactly, hey, this is the guy who's maintaining the code. If I have a specific question or a request or whatever, this is the guy I have to ask. And I think this is what we're missing. At least I don't know where it's documented. There are places where that's documented, there's places where it isn't because those people don't exist. We don't necessarily have people who are, you know, assertive and, and sovereign in cert those certain areas. But couldn't we say like, okay, would be great to have someone here, but volunteers welcome? 
it would, but we've, every time we've tried that, it, it falls over. Generally speaking, what we find is, you know, the scratch your own itch open source mentality is how we generally get people fixing these things. So, in, you know, it, it is a bit of a chicken and egg scenario, but, you know, in the end of the day, some, one minute, somebody has to find, you know, find the bits that annoy them, find a way of fixing them, and then we as a project, including them, have to do a good job of, making it very clear what they're doing, how they're doing it, advertising it there when it's there. But when there's the absence of something, I agree it's really tricky. But that's one reason why we have the board. So yeah. essentially everyone who has a special request like the one that uh, this uh, yeah. person mentioned, we should ask the board and the board would lead us to... That, that's what we're there for. If, if, you, you know, if you get stuck, if you can't figure out those questions yourselves, send them our way. And of course, it's going to have a nice feedback effect, because if you keep on annoying us too much, we're going to have to try and find a way of fixing that, because there's only five of us. Okay, thanks. I want to go a bit ahead, because uh, the other guys here, I don't know for you, but uh, they're SUSE guys, so they know all the guys and they've known them for, that, that, that are working at SUSE. They've known them for years. This, this is an area, I'm an open SUSE only guy, and I'm beginning to know the others, but I would like to know who is who, who is in the KDE team, who is in the GNOME team. And one of the things I thought about during the conference is to spend the next year investigating that and putting it out somewhere so that you can say, KDE team, okay, that's these guys, send them an email. Done. At least have one or two people, because this is like responsible for, you know, getting, getting the strings, because in a community, things change, right? So a developer is like, or somebody who was who had time got a kid or something like that, and then doesn't work anymore. So the, there is an element of those projects need to take some of that responsibility as well. Um, some of them do. So you know, if the project's on GitHub uh, or whatever, quite often within the README or, or something like that, it does list some of the responsible people for contact, etc. It's not necessarily a one-shot scenario again, unfortunately, where some projects or some people don't necessarily want that responsibility of having to field questions or, or whatever else. They just want to get on, write the code, and hopefully somebody else can step in and, and do that side of things. Uh, but I agree, and, and as Richard said, if you don't know, you contact the board, and if we're getting, if the board's getting, you know, a hundred of these sort of requests, the board's going to get fed up pretty quick and go and right, let's implement something. Whether it's we do, a lot of it is on the wiki, but with the issues that the wiki's having at the moment, it's not necessarily the best place. So, do we then look at trying to expand what's linked from uh, www or not? I don't know. Speaking about the wiki, what is the status of the infrastructure? <laughs> <laughs> We're working on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have a meeting today. We're working on it. Um, we're trying to find a more sustainable solution than the current one, where, you know, for people who don't necessarily know, things are breaking and the team involved take a rather long time to fix it sometimes. They have, you know, procedures and uh, such to follow and that you know, gets in the way of a quick solution. Um, so I think part of the long-term fix will be relocating the server, putting it under the responsibility of, of other contributors, so it would be a lot easier to avoid this happening again, or at least fixing it way quicker when it happens. But that's the technology part, right? What about the... Well, I'm, uh, I'm trying to be really diplomatic about the other part. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because the other... Uh, and the, to be, uh, to actually, no, I'll be a little bit less diplomatic. The other part is... The team at Microfocus that's currently responsible is making our life hard. Sousa understands that. They're being great and supportive and pushing very, very hard to get these things fixed. But it's an internal issue at Sousa to get that tidied up. But this is still the technology part. Even if you move the server and update all the technology, the, the wiki is still the bit rotting place that nobody is ever touching. They're not touching it at the minute because of the technical piece. They didn't touch it before the technical problems were there. 
Actually, we have a guy, uh, Christian Botz, he's here, and he really wanted to fix it, and he has all the knowledge, he has all the power, uh, well, he has all the knowledge, and he would do it if he was actually allowed to. So, yeah, that... we, we, have, we have actually volunteers that are willing to fix that stuff once we settle the technical part. The problem is there are some policies in place that need to be overcome. I don't talk about it. I mean, you can ask Christian, where's Christian? There's Christian. Are you going to mark all the outdated pages as outdated? Are you going to fix all the problems with the content? Are you going to move around the stuff? And uh, well, I think first we have some technical problems to solve. And I'm quite sure I will not be able to check all wiki pages for outdated content. So I'd say everybody here go to an open source org special colon random page and check it if it's still okay. So if everybody does one page, that would be a real progress. And yeah, and in addition to, to all the stuff Christopher's doing, and I totally agree with everything Christopher just said, um, we also have Christoph Wickett and the SUSE doc team now trying to contribute more as well. Not on the technical stuff, but on, you know, helping tidy that up, helping rate this stuff, figure out how that's going to work. So, you know, things are moving, they're moving in the right direction. We just have to, you know, really all support that at every level, technical community, or we'll get involved. Anybody else with a question, comment on this topic, on any topic? Carlos has something. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Uh, I remember the last time I heard about the Suzy booth, Suzy Box booth, was kind of three years ago when I stepped away for a while. And I would like to listen a little bit about that project, if that project goes on, if keep it running, if I can help in any way. That's it, open source booth, buff. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, we, the box, uh, the boxes don't really make sense because when you get a request for a box, either large or small, uh, and you're sending it out to a venue that, that could be considerably small. You're sending way too much. Um, so it's basically kind of, of engaging it. Um, okay, how many people are, are there? And then I can make a, make a package that's, that's relatively good enough to send out. Um, Aaron, are you around? Aaron Luna? Ah, there he is, right there. Aaron. So Aaron's in Mexico. And Aaron is, um, I mean, he, he's, he's just a workhorse for us in Mexico. He goes out and goes to, goes to all these events. And I mean, he contacts me, you know, and I say, anytime you have, if, if you need more, come back to me, right? And that's really the thing that's helpful. So, um, but it's really contacting me, giving me the numbers, you know, what venue you're going to, what, what are the, what's going to be the population roughly at that. Um, and then I can kind of gauge it and send you a package, which I've been doing for a lot of different locations, uh, or for a lot of people in different locations. Okay, so I, if I decide to go and run an event in Portugal, my default gateway, it's your mail. Yeah, just email me and, 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 I, and I can get it out. And if there's any special requests or things like that, it, it ultimately comes down to me. I mean, I, I know you want to help, but, but you'd, you'd help on the on the other side, right? And I would be yeah. And I would be shipping that logistically to you. So that's kind of the approach. And Thank just, you. Yeah. And just to add to Doug, there there are some, certain areas where it may actually be cheaper for us to get the things produced locally in country than shipping it from Germany or, or wherever. Um, so that's why you need to be as descriptive as possible um, when you contact Doug to get any of the materials that you need because he may actually know, well, for me to send something to Australia from Germany is just going to cost a fortune, but we've got contacts there that can get the same material produced. Doug just then needs to send the details of the material and then we get it all done there and then. 
Um, so it all really depends. Yeah, makes sense. It's a case by case. Any other questions? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's global question, so it's not just for the border. Um, I would like to see a, a, a plan to how we can get involved and just show what is the work of maintaining a package inside our distribution because we are yeah, in lack of some maintainers and also uh, how people will be able to contribute to the project like editing web page, uh, wiki page, uh, once we fix our technical things. Uh, during, I think, we need a, a kind of large plan during one year, perhaps one year and a half. Um, I think Hackfest, a small workshop, perhaps during a weekend or something like this, could be really, really a um, good thing for us. Yeah, um, I've kind of got two answers for that. So on, on one hand, one thing I... Uh, and in fact, we, we all discussed at the last face-to-face -face board meeting, but haven't had time to move forward yet. Um, so if other people take this idea, run with it, please do. The, the basic thing is, I think we desperately need, as a project, like good, easy, simple, getting started guides. You know, just, you know, a few sides of A4 on the wiki of, you know, the basics of how to do package maintenance or the basis of how to do this and, and you know it's simple stuff it's stuff that all of us all here know and just needs a case of somebody sort of writing it down as a as a you know as a guide that we can then you know point people to lead people to and say look this is this is where you get started with that and I think that's something we desperately desperately need the other part of that is yeah putting that into practice and and you know nothing works better than getting people in a room and talking um, and so hackathons are definitely something I want to see more of but we need people to step up and do them. And basically, what I'm gonna invite everybody here is, if you want to help organize one, start. Start organizing yeah. it, we will, yeah. try and, we will find the money. Organizing a, a, a hackathon or a small yeah. hackfest is quite a lot of work. It's a lot it's of work, uh, but you know. at time. And perhaps one of my question is, uh, you know, it's so easy and, and comfortable, I don't know if this is the right word, but say, okay, I need a place to organize this. We okay. okay, so to answer for the hackathons, basically you don't have to even organize them if you are in any location where Susie has a branch, if it's Germany or Prague and Nuremberg, basically, we have a two times, huh? and Beijing, of course, and Taipei, Provo, basically all our major location, we have Hack Week two times per year, and anybody actually is invited to join us and hack with us on whatever they fancy. They are allowed to our offices. They can use our resources if they need to because they don't have access to proper hardware or anything. So just join us on Hack Week and we have one next week. So Thomas, if you are staying for longer. You, you mean... One important comment, uh, usually you get free food as well. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, so we normally pay for you when you come to. From what you just explained is, okay, I have an idea, I know how I want, would like to have this, yeah, perhaps a video made for, okay, start to help your project and fix your package. And then I should be able to propose that during this Hack Week. Yep. So, so it's, it's open, it's open Hack to... Hack Week is open, yes. Oh, okay, I and, just and discovered and, this yeah. now. <laughs> and even and even if let's say for example scheduling doesn't work, you know we can still host something else at the SUSE offices. We have support from SUSE management to you know host open SUSE events there for this kind of thing. So thank you for you know, that. The location isn't the problem. It's just you know finding the people to put it together, tie it all up. Yeah, we, you know we'd love to have more of that. And also, as part of participating in likes of Hack Week, or if we do have additional 
workshops, etc., we also have the TSP. Um, so you can apply or request for TSP support, and on a case-by-case -case basis, we'll consider it, and there's a good chance you'll get some assistance. Um, so yeah, it, it, don't think that, oh, it's in Nuremberg or Prague or wherever, I can't make it out there, or, or there's a chance that we can help you. Any other questions? Comments? Uh, insults? Uh, moving swiftly on. I could have got insults. I'm looking at you now. Um, one thing that I'm curious as to, was there anything anybody particularly didn't like about the event this week? That's only because you've lost your hair. <laughs> so nobody had any grumbles about the week at all? Ah. Just tiny detail. Uh, I would appreciate if there be, would uh, be free water instead of Pico or Monster drinks. I'm too high all the event. Perfectly yeah. valid. We um, should be able to sort that out. Pardon? Yeah, let's try it in. No problem. Any other complaints? So, um, living here in Nuremberg, I was a little bit surprised that I didn't see myself any advertising in the city about this conference. Myself, I didn't run into, maybe there was some, but I didn't see it myself. And being a free, open conference, I would like to see more advertising to the general public in the region. You missed, must have missed something because I was spoken to in town a couple of times by people who asked me, hey, what's that thing, that's good, your t-shirt, what's that thing going on? So they must have seen it somewhere. And if you travel by the U-Bahn, <laughs> our chairman of the board and some others really wasted the entire, every single poll has an open social conference stick, uh, poster on it. So. I, I, I think you're still right there, Scott, that I, we could have done a better job. I, I think you're right, but I have another anecdotal story. So I have a neighbor that I've been living next to for two years, and he only realized that I worked for Sousa today because he saw all of our posters. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that worked. I mean, he lives right down the... He didn't even know the Nuremberg office is where it is. It's down the road, but, yeah. So, we got some message out there. It kind of worked, but, of course, yes, we can do better. Right. So, that's the, the ugly stuff. What did people particularly like? Being here. I would say the online presence for people who couldn't attend. Being able to either watch the streaming of the, of the presentation or even watch as a replay of the talk less than a day after it has been done on stage. This is great. This is something a lot of conference. Yeah. Kudos to, to the video team. Yeah, that's huge, huge thanks to the AV team at the back here. Uh, without them... Yeah, it's, it's, it's that's something a lot of conference, a free software conference uh, should do. And sometimes they, they are not able to have this level of quality. And again, thanks to the video team. Yeah, yeah we actually managed to beat the likes of professional conference events like Linux Foundation events, etc., where sometimes they don't even have any videoing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it appears to have been well received externally as well as internally within the community, so yeah. And it helps again to spread the knowledge about open source community. Anything else in particular people liked? 
Really? I really enjoy the way uh, those things happen. And I would like to uh, especially thankful uh, Doug for working during your, his birthday. <laughs> and so thank you, thank you everybody. It's actually his wedding anniversary, but he, he's he's still married, so that's a good start. <laughs> we think. Yes, think. <laughs> okay. Any other comments, questions? Yeah. Hi. Uh, I wanted to add to this Hack Week uh, thing. I just realized that it's open for everybody. I didn't know it. Uh, is it uh, somehow advertised? Because I think it would be really great to put some poster to the universities. Like, yeah, we have these ideas. Come join us. Yeah, Hack Week is open. When everything goes smooth and according to plan, then we normally have a bit more time to do that advertising. Um, in this case, with the you know the things internal to SUSE right now, with all the products going on, and this, yeah, Hack Week didn't quite get the the usual lead time we're used to bef between sort of agreement of when it's going to be and and, and the actual date. So. It's been tough, but I, I'm going to mention that yeah, we, we need more time for that so we can spread it and get more people involved, have more open SUSE people, universities, etc. Definitely. Pan no, yeah, Panos, Craig, either of them. Sorry. I would like to um, add one idea based on what you guys are saying about documentation and or um, having uh, tutorials about how we can have maintainers and everything. We live in an age that video and media are uh, way more, let's say, people use YouTube and everything. So I would say consider maybe that creating a video course on platforms like Udemy or something, they, I think that people will actually prefer to have a video rather than a documentation. And I haven't seen any distribution have something like, this is our of official or unofficial, let's say, guide, but in video. So they can actually subscribe and have like... So, yes, it does help a section of people, the videos, but there's also a section of people that despise having tutorial videos on how to do things. But I think in combination with proper documentation, a video can be very useful. One thing that SUSE does for a lot of their products is something that they call uh, chalkboard talks, which are all recorded and it's a um, high level overview of whichever product. If we can do something similar like that, Yes, definitely, and we could even potentially go further down and more detail, longer videos or whatever else, um, but I don't think we should just do videos. It no, needs no, to be in combination. No, of course, of course. I'm saying just an extra because usually, and I'm talking about unexperienced users, people that would like to learn about OpenSUSE and they are afraid to open a terminal. They are afraid of this black guy uh, screen uh, with... Uh, green colors and everything. So if they see, they can immediately duplicate what they see and we, we can have new guys on the OpenSUSE community. Just a small comment, uh, I think there were some packaging videos done by AJ a few years ago or a few tens of years ago. Uh, those uh, might be worthy of updating a little bit, but uh, yeah, I like the idea. Yeah, I, and I was going to mention that example, but actually other examples from last year's OpenSUSE conference and this year's as well. Like last year's packaging workshop from Bidax, I've been using that video in that way. Every time anyone's been asking me about packaging, like the canonical guy who's trying to package Snappy, I just sent him our documentation and that video. And I think the videos helped him more than the documentation did. So 
I've also seen the same with OpenQA, with Ludwig's talk about working with that, where people have been picking that up, using it. So I think OSC and the videos and the videos we're doing here are actually a big part of that as well. And yeah, just, sure. you know, we need to do a really good job of making sure we're going out there, talking about it, blogging about it, quoting it. When anybody asks, you know, you know that OpenSUSE YouTube video, the YouTube channel now has hundreds of videos. They're all there. Just let's, yeah, kind of spread it around there. And then if we have other gaps where we need something specific that we didn't cover in OSC, then yeah, obviously we can look at doing something there too. Does Craig have something to say anymore? No? Oh, okay then. Any other questions? Yeah. And then I think this is the last one. The only thing I've been wondering quite um, regarding the audience in general is this um, comparing other open source events. If you go to FOSDEM, et cetera, you have quite, let's say, a lower age median. And uh, I was wondering if we're doing anything, you know, to get like kids more excited to, to use OpenSUSE. I mean, my boys use it, they like it, but Unfortunately, they couldn't show up, but yeah, I, I, I'm just, you know, curious if, if there are any ideas, because when you go to FOSDEM, uh, Fedora's uh, events, uh, Chemnitz, Linux, Targa, many, many more, you know, you see a lot of kids around here, none. Okay, uh, I think that it's something that we can work on, but uh, I think it's something we have to do individually. Personally, me and uh, Thomas, we are leading a small course for small kids, back in Prague, and we are teaching them Linux, you can probably do something similar. But uh, those kids, I would say from my personal experience, it's uh, hard to get their attention and keep it. And as long as there is more than 10 of them, uh, it's a riot. So uh, yeah, you cannot do it on a huge scale like with adults. Uh, have you seen the Kodo Dojo on Saturday? <laughs> okay, it was like 5,000 kids in there. Yes. They were just concentrated in one place, not running around. They were doing actually hacking. So check out Kodo Dojo. Yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of a step one. We don't necessarily have the expertise on what to do with the children, but people like uh, Kodo Dojo do so partnering with them getting them involved it would have been nice for it to have been a bit more visible but it, it's just one of those things um, but yeah it's it's definitely a good point I mean the first open SUSE summit in the US we had a, a there was an open SUSE lounge whatever else and it had bean bags and there were kids there seeing and, and listening to people talk, you know, having a chat. It was more of a hallway track kind of thing, not necessarily getting hands on keyboards, but it was introducing them to OpenSUSE and, and what we could do. Okay. Um, yeah, and they're, um, they're interested in coming back, the Kodo Dojo guys there, asking when, when's the next time we can do this already. And uh, I want to thank Yashi for for doing that and everyone that volunteered to take part in that. <laughs>